in looking into the future or looking towards the future, this week we'll, we will be remembering and honoring those visionaries who saw a hundred years ahead of their time. We will have the honor of sharing this with many of their descendants and whom you've met here this week. On Thursday and Friday, we will have the opportunity to see many of the greatest antique race cars ever built. Like the Challenge Cup race a hundred years ago, this park and this week's events will again announce to the world that Ormond Beach truly was and is the birthplace of speed. The birthplace of speed committee, various historical and automobile groups are looking at the possibility of continuing an annual springtime event to commemorate our role in racing history. Along with our traditional antique auto show and the Gaslight Parade, which happens on Christmas Day weekend, excuse me, Thanksgiving Day weekend, uh, we're looking forward to having an event that will commemorate this historic activity. We appreciate that. Someday on this beach, the only car that you will see may be those that fly. But thanks to the birthplace of Speed Park, this park that you're dedicating today, everyone will have a reminder of the historic role that Ormond Beach played in race car history. Thank you for coming out today. Now, Bon, Do John, uh, hello, Don Bostrom down front here went to a lot of trouble to produce our beautiful program that we have, and it is a collector's item, and he said that he would hit me if I didn't mention the program. So I'm going to mention the program, and then somebody mentioned to me, well, why don't you tell them about when the other activities are? Don said, I can't do that. you got to buy the program. <laughs> so I did it, right? also like to remind you that we're being filmed, and in case you want to replay some of this, including the uh, Daytona 500 win of Marvin Pants that never happened, It'll be on DaytonaBeach-Live.com. Make sure that you check into it. Right now, this is a, a man that's been on the commission during the time that the question came forward about doing this birthplace of Speed Park and about funding this. And let me tell you what, Ormond Beach not only opened their hearts to this event, they opened their wallets. And former Mayor Fred, I mean, excuse me, uh, Carl Persis is here. But our mayor now of Ormond Beach, with some more thoughts and remarks, Mayor Fred Costello. I don't know how many of you out here know what it means to be proud. If you're a grandpa or a grandma, you know what it means to be proud. And I just want to tell you, I'm proud today. Thank you all for being here. This is a beautiful park. This is a beautiful day. And this is a beautiful crowd to go with it. Uh, if you had seen this park just a couple days ago, your faith might have been tested. That's already been alluded to. I extend a special thanks to the City Commission and the residents of Warman Beach that have accepted the financing for this park because this vision that was cast by the centennial organizers, the committee members, and the sponsors was something that had to be worked on because some people didn't understand the vision. But I think everybody that's here now realizes that this is a great part of our heritage, a great part of our past, and a great part of our future. So I offer my sincere appreciation to the Centennial Committee Chairwoman, Suzanne, who's been recognized a couple times, but let's recognize her again. She did a lot of work. Also, uh, Judy Sloan, our Director of Public Works, our Engineering Department, City staff, the contractors for overcoming the many obstacles they encountered along the way to completing their tasks. My faith never wavered that you were all on the right track and you've made us proud by accomplishing that task. You know, this park will memorialize Ormond Beach's role as the birthplace of speed. Friday at 11 o'clock, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Winton Bullets narrow a fifth of a second victory over the Olds Pirate in the first sanctioned time speed trials, then known as the Ormond Challenge Cup. I hope you'll all be able to join us again on Friday. The Speed Weeks in Daytona Beach now extends over two weeks. That first three-day Speed Weeks event held 100 years ago in Ormond Beach led to seven American and two or three world speed records. I've heard both two and three, Gordon, so I'll yield to you. You said three. Things haven't slowed down a bit since Speed Weeks moved a bit south to Daytona Beach and they started setting records on the tri-oval. 
Our birthplace of Speed Park will honor the memory of those car owners, drivers, and engineers who risked their fortunes and their lives to develop a technology that literally changed the world. Additionally, it's appropriate to acknowledge that a memorial bench will honor Justin Kastner, a student we lost in 1996, and a plaque being refurbished will honor Chip Hines and Carlisle Miller, students who our community lost in 1999. Gordon helped us look back and Isaac Turner challenged us to look forward. I believe you must know and understand your past for your best future. I further believe we must look outside ourselves to plan for our best inside. At this unique time in history, I can't help but ask you to look outside our borders to honor and respect those fighting the war in Iraq while we freely and safely celebrate inside our city. As we dedicate our birthplace of Speed Park here in Ormond Beach, we honor our heritage while our families, friends, and neighbors risk their lives to preserve our right to freely live, work, worship, and play in our beautiful city of Ormond Beach. Our freedom is protected by being a part of the greatest country in the history of the world because we've looked to and learned from our past and we're willing to help others chart a course that leads them to also celebrate their freedoms that we also take for granted, we often take for granted. May God bless the USA and all who stand and fight for universal freedom. Now, on to the ribbon. This is what we've all waited for. We're grateful to have a man, Marvin, come on up and join me, please. We're grateful to have a man join us that has his own place in the history of the Daytona Beach Speed Weeks. And if I get this wrong, you correct me. <laughs> It is my pleasure to introduce one of the greatest drivers of his era, the 1961 Daytona 500 champion. Hey, you got it right. Yes, sir. <laughs> 17 NASCAR victories. He is our Grand Marshal. He's going to help us cut the ribbon. And now, everybody that's supposed to, let's get some scissors and Les Roland has something else to say. And, and then when we're all done, we're going to sing happy birthday to this man right here. We need the mayor, the city commissioner to come up. We also need Isaac Turner, Alan Bergman, director of director of leisure services. Judy Sloan, Judy is here, right here. She's our parks designer. She designed a park. Put your hand together. Now. <laughs> Suzanne Hetty and Nancy Loman. We also have a guest uh, person that is David Rogers. It's going to come up. He's our current racer, and David's going to come up and help cut the ribbon along with Marvin Pinch, our Grand Marshal. Come on, Mayor. Once a mayor, always a mayor. Uh, you may have to get on both sides of the ribbon. Now, make sure the politicians are in front because you can't give them sharp objects if you're standing in front of them. You got it? Alright. Photo op, here we go. Photo op. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your brand new Birth of Speed, Birth Place of Speed Centennial Park. All right. Now, we get to the oohs and the ahs portion of the program. We're going to be going over here and we're going to be unveiling the two cars. You want to move sit? Okay, guess what? I've just been told stay here. That way everybody can see. I don't think that's going to work. You already moved? Come on. Come on now. Everybody ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's do it. On your mark, get set. Go. What you're seeing here in these automobiles, by the way, is it does represent the way the finish was on the beach. That wheel mark right there is your one-fifth of a second. Right there. That close. 
This is the unveiling of the two cars that took the original race down the beach a hundred years ago. The Winton Bullet, here the red one, won the race against the old car in a fifth of a second. <laughs> We go, oh God, the fullest, the most thorough of blessings found in that wonderful word shalom. May it mean to us the fullness of life. May it mean to us the richest of joys. May it mean to us the certainty of love. May it mean to us the cessation of wars. May it mean to us nations living together in peace. Shalom. Peace of and from God. Amen. Amen and let's race. We look forward to seeing you the next two days. Thank you all for coming uh, today. Thank you. Let's race. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday. the dedication of the birthplace of Speed Park. My name's The Raven. You're watching Daytona Beach Live. Daytona Beach, Florida's first internet-only TV station. Hey, there's our friend Dave on the beach. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, Raven, doing great. Yeah. Okay, you having fun? Yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's a great day. I got a real nice blue sky right behind your head, Dave. It's Ormond Beach. We get a lot of blue sky. It's very nice here today. And the park looks fabulous. The cars look fabulous. I saw Don Bartlett's here earlier. I've never met him, but I always said if I got a chance to, I was going to ask him something, but I can't find him. Six, 2003, birthplace of Speed Park. You just seen the dedication, cutting of the ribbon, and two replica cars, the first two cars that ran on the beach. Look at all these people, folks. All these people turned out for the dedication of the birthplace of Speed Park today. 100 years ago, right here in Ormond Beach, it all started. Watching Daytona Beach Live. You're in Ormond by the sea. Ormond Beach, actually. Ormond by the sea is up the road. At the dedication of the birthplace of Speed Park.
like this. So you have some shape. <laughs> And both the Smithsonian and the um, Crawford Museum in Cleveland wouldn't let it go. So that's a shame. They were afraid to trust it. They were afraid to trust it to anybody, so it still sits there in the museum, the bullet number one, alongside the bullet number two, which is the one that has a straight eight engine and two four cylinder engines coupled together. That's an awesome thing to see. Yeah, first straight eight. Nice. Let me uh, swing around the other side if you dare. Okay. Okay. That one will know what side. Yeah, the. Uh, they have all. I should get between the, the cars here. Yeah, so can sure. See both the pirate and the and the. Uh, and the we're, we're not Hollywood here. We just kind of go as we as well, it comes cool. along. That's yeah. Cool. As long as it works. Yep. We're looking forward to seeing some of the Oh, I'm but, looking uh, forward to it myself. My uh, my grandfather should have been here today. He died in 1952. I wore his watch today, so he would feel like he was here with me. Well, I'm telling you what, I think that he's here he with is. you. I think he is. I, I have a, a special place in my heart for that wear and more medals that used to belong to people. Yes. Yeah, I, I have a rock that I found in the graveyard the other day. and it's, I, I, think that, it's I think that does bring, bring the memories back. Right, and Absolutely. you know, I like to remember people like that. I lost them when I was 19 years old. And I, when you're young like that, you never ask enough questions and you never get to know the guy well enough, even though he's your granddad, you know? Right. And you, you'd like to go back and do some things over again. I'm glad that we can capture this on, on tape because this is a historic event. It is. It's terrific. And we can show it to the world and hopefully somebody else will learn a little bit about the history of motor racing and how it all got started exactly. and where it got started. Where it got started. And all of it happened in Cleveland, Ohio, which was bigger than Detroit as far as building cars in the early part of the century. Right, it was first. Cleveland was the capital of the automobile building business. Right. And then uh, wasn't it Henry Ford started a plant up there in Detroit, the Rouge River plant, wasn't it? Yes. And he did that because there was a river right there and he could get power or something. True. If I'm not mistaken, I'm from the Michigan area, so I kind of know a little bit about yeah, Henry yeah. there. Yeah. I've been to Greenfield Village many times myself. Yeah, that, I have too. That's a nice place. It's a fabulous it place. Really fabulous place. If Hope you get to... up that way again, you should go to the Crawford Museum in Cleveland. Really? I've never heard of that one. Reserve Historical Society and the Crawford Museum. That's Frederick Crawford, who was the head of TRW. He started the museum with his personal auto collection. And then it just grew from there. Okay. Um, they probably have a website, am I correct? I would imagine they do. Yeah, I'm going to go and look for that. CRAW. CRAW, F-O-R-D. Okay. Western Reserve Historical Society. Either or or both. You ought to be able to get on the website. Okay, yeah, just do a search for them in a search engine or something, sure. Right. Okay. So are you going to actual race tomorrow? or? I think they're going to have maybe a flag man for the start of some of the classic car races. Okay, that'd be I'm great. Forward to that. Yes, I'm looking forward to filming you. I'll be here for all three days. And um, they're going to start about 10 or 11, am I correct? 10 o'clock on uh, Thursday for practices, and then the big race with the Winton Bullet, and, the, and the, it won't be the Bullet, it'll be the Winton car driven by Charlie Waite and the old Pirate Rebel here. That'll be at 11 o'clock promptly on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Fun to watch. I'm glad we can broadcast yeah, it on the internet stuff. for the people in Germany and Europe and terrific stuff that stuff. can't be here. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. And what was your name again? Rod, Rod Denon. Denon. Rod Denon. Yeah. Rudolf Udick was my grandfather, and he was the guy that built the car. Okay. Thanks, Rod. Okay, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> It'd be cool if you get a picture of me. Oh, really? Yeah, after you threw him in. Sure.
You know, my hat's not going to fit after all this. Well, both of these models were built with them. What's your name, guy? Tom Rowe, R-O-E. Okay. And what's your connection with this car, Mr. Rowe? Uh, Ari Olds was my great-grandfather. Okay, I understand. It's a very, very nice car. I either call you... This is our special friend Ruby from the Living Legends of Auto Racing.com, and she's sitting in the old fire. Now that's a picture, folks. Coming to ride around the beach. Yes. You would have been a natural, Ruby. Just would have been if I'd have just been here instead of picking cotton. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad you're here now. I'm glad you're here now. Just glad to. Having fun on a gorgeous day and a beautiful ceremony. Isn't it a nice park? It sure is a gorgeous park. Look what they've done to it in Foreman Beach. It's Fabulous. And I love getting a picture of you in the car. Oh, boy, all of these things, gadgets, the pull and twist, and here, here we go. Thanks a lot, Ruby. How are you doing? Doing great, man. It's March 27th, and we're down here in Ormond Beach, right next to the world's most famous beach. And yesterday, they dedicated the birthplace of Speed Park, and today, they're going to have some exhibition races on the beach and a bunch of old antique cars for us to look at. I'm telling you what, you're in for a treat today. You're out here with me, Dave on the beach, and Raven with Daytona Beach Live, Daytona's first internet-only TV station. This is a newly dedicated park. Do you have extra, do you have extra tape and stuff? Yes. All right. Looking south, we just came on the Granada approach, and we're down here on Almond Beach. And you see some of these beautiful old cars down here queuing for the start of this exhibition. There's a Stanley steamer right in front of us. Tell us your name. Yeah. And... Yeah, yeah, tell us your name and where you're from. My name is Gwen Howard from Richland, Michigan. All right. Uh, we trailer her down here, these uh, 1906 Stanley Belt, uh, Stanley Steamer uh, Vanderbilt Cup Racer models. There were only two of these originally made, uh, and they were been long since lost, so we reproduced a couple of them. Uh, my friend is here with the white one, and I have the green one. Okay. And they were not originally equipped with fenders, but they're pretty more. Friendly right, so these are this is an actual replica car that you built. Yes, it's all tried to uh, make it all in the uh, original design. These are this is all wood, all wood. The seats are wood, the fenders are wood. Wow. So, um, when was this put together? Pardon? When was this one put together? Yeah, we finished about three years ago, I think. Wow, it sure is gorgeous. Now, do you sell these in kids also? No, it took us about for yourself. It took us about five years to do them. Okay. I, I used a lot of the old photographs and then made engineering drawings off the old photographs. Excellent, excellent. And what year is this? Oh, 1906. 1906. It went 104. 
here in 1970 on the Mayflower. Okay, 104 miles an hour? Yeah. Wow, that's fast back in the old days. Yeah. That's great. Well, my name's Raven, and this is Dave on the beach. We're from the Internet TV station. Yeah. Here, I'll give you one of our cars. Fire tube boiler in there. There's 2,000 feet of half inch copper tube in there. 2,000 feet? Yeah. Wow. So it's basically a big boiler. Yeah, the boiler sits right here. Huh? 40 gallon water tank that's here. steam-powered car here. One of the early cars, 106 miles an hour right down here on this beach. These fenders are made out of wood. The water's heated with kerosene. Were these oil-burning headlamps? Settling. Settling headlamps. Wow. I think we need one of those for the station, Raven. Yeah, you can drive I think you do too. We just happen to have one. <laughs> <laughs> we have a red one, we'll tell you. All right, that's what we need. A red one would be great. Buy gasoline. Yeah. Yeah, I know he just closed it. I want to see it. Packard Super 8. Maybe your name and stuff? Well, that's my husband, Alan Crane. 
Hi, Alan. How are you doing? Hey, Alan. I'm Dave, and that's Raven. And it's a 1923 Maxwell Speedster. A what? 1923 Maxwell Speedster. Great. Excellent. Excellent. And did you guys used to, or did this car race down on the beach before? No. Okay. Oh, you made this car. Yeah, okay. you can tell you about how I made it. It's a, it's a 23 Maxwell. Maxwell's a forerunner of Chrysler. Uh, Walter Chrysler started managing Maxwell in 1923 for the banking business. He took it over in his own name in 1925 and turned his car into a Chrysler. I uh, hand built this body for myself. I did everything but the lettering. Tommy Proctor done the lettering. And, uh, my wife was supposed to drive it in this race, but she broke her arms, and now she can't drive it. So I had to drive it. I was hoping that she would drive it. <laughs> well, you're you're not gonna let her down, right? No. It's a it's a 22 horsepower, four cylinder, 185 cubic inch, 4.6 quarter suction rear and three speed box. Ash wood covered with 20 gauge steel, acrylic enamel paint. It's all stock standard. I, I did the reboard the engine last winter. And how did the name Saturday Night Special the delivery? Reason I, the reason I went with that, I have this vehicle here. I got a 25 manual with a Big Al Speakeasy supply on it. And I wanted to, like nice. that was the sponsor of this car. And it's Saturday Night Delivery was special. And my wife was a crew chief. I have this foxhole because I was raised in a foxhole valley out of 30, 50 miles south of Rochester. I named it the White Lightning. And for a number on the back, I was in the first destroyer that I was on. All, all destroyers in the Navy are called tin cans. Okay. And so I have the first, well, USS Walden was the first. Okay. And I was on that in the 40s. And so I, for a number, I picked 699. It's all, and the wood is all natural cherry wood. I steam got the cherry wood. Fabulous. That's great. And my wife, good wife, is a good help for the whole thing. Give credit where credit's due or pay dearly forever after. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been married 50 years. So. Over 50 years, so. 51 in May. <laughs> well, thanks an awful lot for talking with us. Thank you. There you see in here another Stanley steamer. That's the Maxwell, the forerunner of the Chrysler. That's an Italian entry from Milano. Stanley steamers everywhere. My name's Raven, and this is Dave on the Hi, beach Dave. from Home Good Productions. Meeting you, man. What's your name, guys? Meyer, Don Meyer. Don Meyer? That's the thing right there. That's this thing on the beach. They, re, they remade those cars. Yes, all of them are remade, actually, yeah. This car uh, has remade coachwork on it, but the rest of the car 
It's identical to Barney when Barney had it. So. Wow. Well, who was Barney? Barney Oldfield. Who was Barney Oldfield? Tell me. Yeah, Barney Oldfield. You have to ask that. Well, it's a long story. <laughs> Barney's probably the most famous, famous racehorse in the world. Yeah, Barney Oldfield. 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 Yeah,
He's going to turn the time of the day, I believe. Steve, Stanley Steamer in the right hand lane, getting off to a fast start. Right now, it looks like he has the lead. Prep site, you'll see a picture of Bill France standing with his helmet and goggles next to yeah. a car just like this. Notice the well, gold Chris sticker the on there. When the Bill France had his garage, garage going, it was it. Yeah. a golf gas time. station. Well, Sir, what is the make and model of the car? Oh, 1935 Ford 3-Window Coupe. Bill France's car. What is your name? 35 Ford 3-Window Coupe out there. Bill France Replica. In the left-hand lane from Mormon Automotive here locally in Dick's corner of the committee, this year is Mormon Automotive, which is Suzanne Hetty, the chairman of the first place of speed committee. Bill France car, 37 miles an hour. A nice gentleman on pace. Oh, I'm going to kind of wander down the beach, see how far I can get. I don't know how you'll be watching me. Yeah, over here. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going up to a gentleman that has been around this sport for about 40 years, taking motorsports pictures. He recently retired from the Daytona International Speedway Corporation. He has uh, taken off. And then I have a crazy guy. Yeah, right the 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 what they have to repair, what they have to do. I walk around there, they didn't walk around And I teach kids to speak it. We're with John Gunn. How come you guys didn't pay to go back? How much you got? 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 I didn't know it, but hell, the back was there with two cars on me. That was like 14 miles long. Two back to the Do you remember Bud Sothenroff? Hell yeah. Daughter of the parish. Now Bud died. Bud Sothenroff. Oh, yeah. 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 These guys got high gear. Right chain on both sides of these cars. Hi, my name's Raven from Internet TV Station, Daytona Beach, DazLive.com. We're standing right here at the birthplace of speed exhibition races with Mr. Hilly Bryant. Glad to have you here. And I understand this is going to go all over the world. This is going to go all over the world to 75 countries. We're pulling 17,000 hits a day now, Mr. Hilly. Is that right? You think some of the people say, hey, my guts is going to no. say that? No, no, no. I think they're going to no, 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 where I live. They're going to love you, buddy. Don't tell them where you live so they won't come by. They can't shoot you through the Internet. <laughs> uh, this is a good It's the 100th anniversary. And of course, you know, I'm the one who got to roll with Leo and him and Pepper and Patty and the world this big day. But uh, today is just exhibition day, just exhibition today. But tomorrow we'll have them all run down. And we have, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, antique cars here. There's a bunch of about a half a dozen of uh, the payments. But now it's going to be a big day tomorrow. And we're going to be here tomorrow too. Okay. Check out the also. Did you really? You I ran that on the internet. Good. We're going to run it. You're doing a good more. job. We're glad to have you here. Now, remember, you called me about two months ago. You bet. I'm coming here. Then you got hooked up with Claude. Yep, Miss Audrey Pranny. Yeah, Miss Audrey. 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 Yeah, Miss Audrey.
You're on. Okay. This here's the fastest wood. Peggy Wood. <laughs> wow, you can show yeah, Larry Joe Rucker, the fastest woman ever driving on the beach. The fastest woman ever driving on the beach. 150.375. And how much did that ticket cost her? 150.375 miles per hour. Great. That was driving a Chrysler. Uh, that was in Pontiac. Oh, Pontiac. Wonderful. In 58, you came over to my, when I went down through there with the women, you came yeah, over and asked me who set yeah. the car up went down through at 123 mile hour, and the park the cars only went down at 114, and, and you came over and asked me who set it up. Remember that? I, I said, I don't know who set it up. I just got it off the truck last Wednesday. <laughs> That's amazing. Say her name again, Hilly. Vicki Wood. Vicki Wood, okay. Everybody knows Vicki Wood in the racing world. I wanted to be sure they heard it. Those engines are loud. she's going to be here for a long, long time. Great. She's 39 now, and she expects to be here until she's on. Well, we'll watch for her every year. <laughs> We've got Tommy Elmore here. Tommy Elmore is the only living driver from the race from 1936, he says. That's right. Tell us a little bit about that race well, right here. <laughs> well, that was, uh, yeah, that was the first race they had on the old beach road course. And uh, I drove there several times. I finished third in the uh, first race and should have won it if they'd run it by the race. Well, what they said they were going to use for the rules. But uh, I drove four or five races at different times. I drove, I drove for Red Bolt. Red Bolt was a real good mechanic. And everybody knows in NASCAR. This is pre NASCAR. And, uh, I gave up racing in 1941. I got married in 41. I think, well, I've had my fun about eight and a half years of it, so I, I have raced that. Great. Now, you were racing down on the south end of the beach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right at the very south end. Uh -huh. and that's my first race. Bill, Bill put on it. Bill France and I were good friends. How many years did you race down there? Well, I don't know. I raced from 36 to 41. Wow. But uh, I didn't race every race. I wasn't a professional driver. I just did a couple of okay. how, how many different cars did you drive? Well, uh, usually 39 Ford, so uh, uh, 34, 39, because the Ford were the ones that were on this lead. Did you build the cars that you no, ran? No, or? This was a stock car race, 36. I, see. I bought a brand new one right off the showroom floor. And funny thing happened, they were about to disqualify me in the uh, inspection after the time trial. They said I had a fast cam in my car. And uh, it turned out that I did have, and I did not know it. I just bought the car off the showroom floor. But at the time, there had to be 100 cars made with that in it before it had put out 100 cars. So I got in. But my car had run five miles an hour fast, and they didn't force down it. It didn't hurt. All right, you've been listening to Tommy Elmore, one of the original racers down here. Racing down on the south end of the beach today. He's up here looking at this centennial celebration of the birthplace of speed. I'm Vicki Wood, and I still hold the record on the beach of 150.375. And I'd love to do it again. Things have changed, and we can't do it anymore. So these are a few of the uh, cars. This is how I got started. I was the first woman to drive the Daytona track. I was the first woman to drive the Atlanta track. There's the, King, uh, the Chrysler that I drove on the beach also. There's Bill France Jr. when they opened up the Georgia track. International speed race. That's you shaking everybody's head. Yeah. That's how I got started. <laughs> after it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to take a look at the website at OpenBeachDashLine.com. Down here for the race. There will be some live cam action for the things you've been seeing here today. And that's before the newscast get on tonight. Dan Smith back in the lane there, the black car you see sitting there, is a three-quarter replica of the Ransom E. Olds. Oh, yeah.
you catch that, then you black it. And he's getting ready to take off. He gets up on to get this very special replica. This is called, this is a museum piece, ladies and gentlemen. The copy of the Ransom E. Old Pyro. Here comes history. There's nothing no more historic ladder than this pyro coming up. This is the uh, uh, General Motors up the original car. This is for all intents and purposes the car of the Ransom. We're talking about the car in the other lane here, the old pirate, the black car. Steve Moscow, the Oh, we stalled it. Hey, got a head start. The 1903 Ultra Pirate. Tomorrow it'll be matched up against a Winton car. And we will reenact the, original the race of 1903. This is the first run that this pirate has had on the beach. Reenacting 100 years of beach racing. Public Information Director Joe Radcliffe is with me from the city of Ormond Beach. I have to thank the city for all the great things you guys have done, John. Uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for helping us on this up, and it's been a great partnership. It's uh, one of the things that the city's really looked for. we got uh, about 20 organizations involved, including uh, organizations that I see, publications from Daytona Beach, and uh, we've got great support from everybody. The Conventional Visitors Bureau for $15,000 uh, to help with the uh, media and advertising uh, in the region for this event. It's just been a really great partnership. A great partnership, and it puts the eyes of Northern Ireland Beach. There's a lot of international attention been placed in this event, Joe. Yeah, we've gotten, uh, we've gotten calls from, uh, we've gotten calls from, we've got an email yesterday, uh, Chicago Sun Times, we've got a story, we've got a lot of, uh, Toronto's been running, uh, they've been running several stories, the Toronto Sun, uh, we've, uh, We've got, we got a uh, web broadcaster here. You guys are on the internet by uh, Daytona Beach hyphen live.com. You can pull up the web broadcast of uh, this entire event. Thanks to a uh, local uh, web broadcaster. Uh, goes by the name of the Raven. He does a nice clean website. There's a lot of events in Daytona Beach. Uh, Tom Tim has the lighthouse, the factory, a lot of other things. And he's filming this entire event. He's here today, right now. Joe Radcliffe, Public Information Officer, City of Ormond Beach, and I, I gotta tell you something. Boy, Joe, been thank you. He's told to be here at the there it is, a three-quarter replica of the original physician all over the world consulted with John D. He wanted to look to be a hundred years old. The grandest race in 1903. He was told that Ormond Beach would be the climate where he had lived to the age of 100. Well, they lied. He only lived to be 97 and a half years old. All together now. How do you like that windshield? Yeah, I don't like a guy to take a picture of you. Next. Hey, man, my name's The Raven from Daytona Beach, DanceLive.com. Daytona Beach's first internet station. We're here with Mr. Bill Barnes. He owns this car. This is a Stanley Steamer. Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania, Lewis. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about your car? Yeah, it was one of the uh, two cars built in 06 for the uh, Vanderbilt Cup race. It was a factory Stanley car. So St Stanley had the world speed record 127 mile an hour. This is similar similar to the rocket car that actually ran on this beach. Okay. So, but it was made it was made for Vanderbilt races, but it's still we're having a good time here though. When was this one built? 1906. I mean, this actual car, this one. 1906. This is not a yeah. replica. This. No, this, is this, is, original car. this is an original right. car. He had a few original pieces from this one, and then he had to add some pieces, manufacture some. Sure. But it started out as an original car. This That's one. interesting because somebody told us there there were only replicas so on the beach this morning right, earlier. Right. Right. Original, some original pieces. It depends. I don't know what you. Most cars, early cars, aren't many parts left. Right. And. Uh, I have a few rooms of people, so I like But this one didn't start out as a kid. No, no, right. no. Take a look 
So this is really a Stanley steamer. All right. Something's really rare on this car is a single digit six plate, which is from Pennsylvania. Good show. Yeah, it's on the front. It's a, it's a, I collect Pennsylvania license plates. It's a, it's the lowest plate known from Pennsylvania. That's the first year. That's a real rare plate. Really? Yeah. That's a $5 plate. Is that really a real plate? Yeah, what's that? Is that really a real plate? Yeah, that's a real plate, yep. Man, that thing must be worth some bucks. Yes, it's a good plate. Wow. What's that? It's the yeah. lowest Pennsylvania plate known. The lowest known Pennsylvania plate. It's right out here on the right beach there with on us. That car. 1906 yep. on the number six Vanderbilt Stanley steamer. It's out here today for the... Anniversary. What's the name of your site? It's Centennial Anniversary. Yeah, it's birthplace yeah, oh, yeah, that's great. That's a great day. Where are you, Will? Huh? What are you doing down here? Uh, you just got, oh, I live here. There's a 180 mile an hour car. Looks like a Lotus to me. This is the little Stanley Steamer Roadster you were just looking at. Yeah, I thought it was Lindsay from Long Island and Flagler Beach. Uh, we're here three, four months of the year and in Long Island the rest. This is a 13 Stanley. I've had it 29 years. Someone asked me how long it took me to operate it, or learn to operate it, and I told them 28 and a half. And perhaps that isn't even true. I guess I'm still learning. <laughs> Kenny, you, you perhaps want to ask a question or two. Did you say you'd owned this car 13 years? Pardon? How long did you say you'd owned this particular car? 29 years. 29 years, wow. How many miles do you suppose you've put on the car? Probably eight or 10,000. Uh, I've, dri I've driven it on national meets at least 20 times. And How many states has the car been in? Um, probably 15 and Canada. Wow. I have a question for him. This Stanley Steamer looks like a version of a, a street version. Am I correct there? The one we just looked at looked like a racer. This one here seems more like a like a family car. Well, actually, you're, Am I entire, correct there? You're, you're entirely right. It is the production model for John Q. Public sales. And I think it cost about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars brand new. Whereas, incidentally, a Model T was then costing uh, four hundred and ninety or. $475. As so, compared to this. Compared to so it was a luxury car in its day, uh, for sure. Semi-luxury. Cadillacs were much more expensive. Uh, well, what was your name again? Ray Lindsay. Ray Lindsay? Ray Lindsay. Okay, thanks a lot for talking to us, Ray. Well, very good. Very good. 
cars up for us. The pictures have found a lot of people. They need to be my age. I'm Dave with Wolf Dog Productions. I'm out here with Raven from Daytona Beach Live, Daytona's first internet only TV station. They got an exhibition race going on. This is the centennial anniversary of the birthplace of speed right here in Ormond Beach. Back in 1903, they started racing right here on the beach. The actual first race was gone down. It was an Oldsmobile Pirate and a Winton machine. And those two cars raced in 1903, and that's what started the whole thing. This is the celebration of that event, and I'm right here with Dave from Wolf Dog Productions. I am the Raven, and we're showing you the cool stuff. We're out here 100 years later, Raven. That's right, I'm getting old, Dave. <laughs> okay. That'd be great. I'll be right back. You're looking at an American La France. No, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Got someone going to get the owner of this vehicle. The seat looks like something out of your house, huh? Got chains on both sides. 1911. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, we're on. Um, it's a 1911 American La France. Um, this is a uh, 10 liter. Um, it's a, it is a period uh, speedster, um, just like they would have built back in that period. We, we tried to spend as much time on the detail as we could. Um, you know, it's, it, when they did this event, they would take the family car, actually dismantle it up at the house and come down here and race it. And that was just how it was done. Um, 10 liter. It's a gigantic engine. What kind of uh, horsepower does that thing 70 produce? horsepower. It should, the way it's geared right now, it should do 100 mile an hour. Wow. At 1400 RPM. It's, this was, this was, um, it's a twin cam. You gotta imagine, 1911. Cars were in their infancy. It was twin cam. It had shock absorbers. It had, um, you yeah, look at that. Three speed. If you look at the gas pedal, this thing has cruise control. See the cam? Wow. Amazing. Um, tachometers, or the period tachometers. You know, here's your, your fuel pump. You, you go, and that pressurizes, and you shut it off, and uh, the, the gas is now up to the curb. This is beautifully made. Is it a replica or is it actually no, the car? It's, we bought it 10 years ago and we finished it yesterday. Man. This is, so we, you know, it's, it's not a, a bunch of modern parts. It is of that, it's a, it's a period race car. Mm -hmm. Restoration. It's a period race car. one place in the rear rack. And uh, very the rack. We didn't try to make it anything more than what it is. It's a gorgeous car. I mean, the machine work and everything on it looks like an aircraft. We, had, we, had, we made uh, cast cars. We did whatever we had. You were just listening to John Weiser talk about that beautiful American La France. Now you're looking out here at this uh, three-quarter replica, three-quarter size replica of the old pirate. A lot of this stuff that you got to have. Two cylinder car. I don't know what I'm looking at. Two pistons, 180 degrees from each other. And he's having a little trouble getting it fired up out there. Yeah. 
A three-quarter scale reproduction of the original car to run out here in 1903. The old pirate. There is a model of this car made in Vancouver that's sitting in the park. It was dedicated yesterday to the birthplace of speed on Atlantic Avenue in Granada in Ormond Beach. And you're up here on Ormond Beach again today. The 27th of March, 2003, a centennial celebration of the birthplace of speed. Firing, but it doesn't seem to want to start. We had a beautiful day for racing. All these vintage racers have turned out very well. I think you'll agree. It turned out to be a beautiful day. Excellent. We have some uh, some of the most powerful racers and the best collection of turn of the century race cars ever assembled any place on earth. This collection is the most impressive collection. If you go to a, a, a racing event like this, you'll see two, maybe three. You'll never see this many. And tomorrow we have 20 more coming. So there will be an even, even bigger group tomorrow. It will be a, a, something to see, something to remember, I think. Now, Great. Am I correct in saying that this is an exhibition race today and tomorrow you guys are going to have an actual race? We will. We will. It'll still be slow. The actual race will still be slow. We're, right. going, okay. we're going to have uh, uh, a reenactment of the very first race. We have a Winton racer coming uh, and the Olds Pirate that you saw. And uh, that, that will be 100 years to the day. We'll have international flags along the beach. We'll have antique planes fly over to the singing of the national anthem. Nice. Uh, we're going to have them all. Just uh, carry on. What was your name once again? Dan Smith. Dan Smith. Dan nice Smith. To meet you, Dan. Do you know how many entrants there are in this event, Dan? Uh, approximately 50 cars and 15 bikes. Wow. We'll have those here tomorrow. Do you know how many states are represented here? Oh, geez. Turn the wheel like that. The farthest one we have is either Phoenix or Ontario. I'm not sure which. Uh, which ones? If I have to take a, a ruler to figure that out. Right. But, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. Great. At the uh, Rance Fields Pirate, this is a minute if I can get this away and still be heard. And the man with the plan, I tell you what, Dick Balsley has been working his fanny on this round with the Ransom Eels three quarter version of the Pirate. Hello there. I'd like to thank WLE 1380 AM radio station that's uh, been doing a lot of the broadcasting. Day, huh? yeah. But as Raven, how you doing? Pretty good, Roland. How you doing? Really good. A once in a lifetime opportunity for this video footage. Tell us what we're going to see on the web. In about 20 minutes, we're going to blast all this video to the world. Over 75 countries. We're following about 17,000 kids a day. We're going to show this historical event to the whole wide world. Then we're going to put it in reruns and run it over and over and over. After this event, it's long gone. 
once in a lifetime opportunity, the centennial event. It is DaytonaBeach-Live.com. Thanks for providing that to us. Right. And uh, you have a link on our page now also. Yeah, you can go to BirthplacesSpeed2003.com, very top of the page. Click on that, it goes directly to the site. And then what do they click on once they get to your site? Basically, they'll need a real player, and they click on either the 56K channel or the broadband channel, and they'll start the real player, and they're watching TV on the net. The real player is given to you free. You can download it free on the net, and you can watch it live. Thanks, Raven. You just heard Roland Villa. He's the master of ceremonies for the event out here today, sponsored by the newspaper, Daytona Beach News Journal. How you doing, Dave? There's the Raven from Daytona Beach Live. I'm going to tell you what, I'm having me a good time at the Centennial of the birthplace of speed right here in Ormond Beach, Florida. This is where it all started, Dave. If none of this stuff would have happened, we wouldn't have NASCAR today. We gave the Raven a little day off from behind his camera lens, put him in an administrative position down here today, and it's working out great. That Thanks, way, you all get to see him quicker on the Internet. Thanks. Stanley Steamer. They're going to try out their speed, I guess, for today before they lose their chance. Hey, man, my name's The Raven from DaytonaBeach-Live.com. We're Daytona Beach, Florida's first internet-only TV station. I'm right here with Dave on the beach from Wolf Dog Productions. And together, we're Daytona Beach Live, and we're blasting the centennial event of the birthplace of speed around the world. I want to take this time to say a special, special thanks to the folks out at www.prohosting.com for all the killer bandwidth they've been giving us and the hosting of our page. If you need any help with your hosting and web e-commerce needs, they can help you out. www.prohosting.com, the killer, most awesome web hosting company in the world. We also want to take a special say a special thanks to the best inn and suites beaches oceanfront over at 1299 south atlantic avenue right here in daytona beach florida usa call them on their 1-800 number 1-888-860-6383 my name is the raven and that's dave on the beach and we're daytona beach live
Hey man, my name's The Raven. We're sitting right here in Ormond Beach and Dave on the Beach is truck from Wolf Dog Productions. And I'll tell you what, if you guys are checking out this event that we're broadcasting around the world, or you're thinking about coming to Daytona Beach and you want to know what's going on here in Daytona Beach, all you have to do is check out our friends over at www.daytonabeachknowitall.com. They have all the info on where to eat, where to stay, things to do, movies, radio stations, TV stations, you name it, DaytonaBeachKnowItAll.com has it. Go check them out. You'll see what I mean. Oh, don't forget, they got a link on our page, baby. They must be cool. We're back over here at the casements. We're going to have another look at some of these old cars and some of the ones they wouldn't bring down on the beach. There's the Raven. You're out here with Dave on the beach from Wolf Dog Productions and Raven with Daytona Beach Live, Daytona's first internet only TV station. Getting some video of this historic event, the centennial celebration of the birthplace of speed up in Ormond Beach. Hey, Raven. Hey Dave, how you doing? Great, man. We're over here in Norman Beach at the park at the casements and we're going to show you some really, really cool stuff now. I guess this would be the definition of a horseless carriage, Dave. Sure looks like a carriage without the horses ready. That's right, and they got a little tiny motor in here with some exposed fans. I think if you put your finger down there, it might just chop your fingernail right off. I could probably rig up a little device with a cage and have Lucky sit in there and run like heck, and he could probably move that, baby. Look at this setup down here, Dave. It's got dual fans. Had to be very innovative for that year. You can see the spark plug on the top. That thing looks a little bit like the server that you run the station with, right? Yeah, <laughs> antique. <laughs> Hey 
David. Looks like we got a bunch of food over here at the food court. This looks like the fair to me, man. Yeah, just like the carnival out here, Raven. You bet. And the people can hear all the sounds and they can see the sights, but they cannot smell the smell. Boy, they got to smell the lemonade and the cotton candy out here. Here's our racing friend, Vicky. Hi. Hi, Vicky. I'm just trying to get something to eat. <laughs> we were just looking at all the food courts. It reminds me of the fair. Yeah. It smells good. All the people can see the sounds and they can hear hear the sounds and see the sights, but they can't smell the smell. Oh, that's for sure. That was the lady that holds the world speed record on Daytona Beach. And she is a very, very cool lady too, huh, Dave? Vicky's great. She gives me a hug every time I see her, just about. You're on. There's the popcorn TV. lady. I'm on internet TV. <laughs> Uh, they call themselves the Halifax Country Band, in fact, so please come out to Mars 2 o'clock. Two days a week. Kiwanis International out here. Gorgeous little park down here on the Halifax River. On a beautiful day. Thursday, 27th of March, 2003. You're out here in Ormond Beach. Here, Dave. Team four. Columbia Mark 14. This has dual It's got dual Could I get you to feed a bunch of that here for that camera right there on the internet TV station? Oh, And you guys wouldn't mind us filming. You guys you guys can even be in if you want. No, that's right. You know, we can we can know him talking a little bit about the car. Yeah. Oh, my name is George Dragon, from Bristol, Connecticut. And I'm the owner of this 1904 Columbia. I was built in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a two-cylinder car. Uh, one of the first American cars that have the engine under the hood. Most, most of the early cars, the engines were under the body. Uh, it's also one of the earliest to have the three-speed uh, gearbox with a regular clutch. Most of the early cars were planetary transmissions, and it's a left-hand drive. Um, one of the things that was uh, uh, sort of state-of-the-art at the time was the body. It's a rear entrance tonneau. They did not have the side doors yet at that time. So your extra thing, uh, extra packages and things were stored in these wicker baskets on them that are mounted on the side of the body. Uh, most people comment when they come up to this car today about the smooth tires. It has all white smooth tires. But that was uh, correct for the time. The um, Back in 1904, that's all you could get was smooth, light gray or all white tires. Uh, they really didn't have treaded tires until well, around 1908 or 1909. Wow. So, so that's uh, very correct for the time. Uh, it has kerosene side lamps and a tail light. Take this way and get the dashboard. And the headlights are um, carbide. This is the carbide tank for the headlights, and carbide is a powder that when mixed with water creates a gas. Uh, and you light the headlights like you would a uh, crystal light. Uh, wow. Type of things. 
So there's a lot of gadgets people ask about. This has all types of lubrication, which was another thing that was very advanced for the time. Each one of those uh, brass pumps. Uh, pumps there and do something. They either lubricate parts of the transmission, the throw bearing, the clutch. So uh, that's one of the things about this car is you just can't just step up to it, put the switch on and crank it. You have to lubricate everything first, so, which is kind of an uh, uh, advanced for that time. It's How long have you owned the car? I've owned the car for about four years. I bought it from a collector who restored it in 1960. So this is sort of an old restoration, but it is held up pretty well. How much have you driven it? I've driven it uh, quite a bit, as much as possible. Uh, uh, top speed is around 30 miles an hour. Uh -huh. So uh, it's been on a, quite a few tours. It's actually been to uh, London, England, for the London to Brighton run, which is a yearly reenactment. It's a 52-mile run from London to the town of Brighton that reenacts the, an 1896 an emancipation run for the early car. So this has been, I didn't take it, but the previous owner has taken it there three or four times. It's been to Bermuda, there's a couple tags, it's been to a tour in Bermuda, it's been across the country a few times, so. And where did they manufacture the car originally? In Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut. It was the company that originally built a Columbia bicycle. Okay. Um, Colonel Albert Pope started the company back in the 1800s, and in the turn of the century, the 20th century, uh, he got into the car business. So the name Columbia uh, was carried over from bicycles to, to the cars. Car company. So they built both electric and gasoline cars. Okay, and what year was it again? This is in 1904. 1904. But the, but the Columbia gasoline cars were built from 1898 to 1912. And by 1912, he had made millions of dollars, and then and some, he, he actually uh, invested more money in the electric cars than the gasoline cars. And by 1912, the electric starter came out on Cadillac, so the electric... Took, yeah, yeah, kind of took a dive, yeah. Took a dive. Just like the steam cars. By, right. by, you know, 1912 or so, no one wanted steam or electric, because gasoline cars were much more improved. Sure. You go farther. What's funny is we're going back to electric now. Yeah, well, it'll be some time. It took a long time yeah, to get there. True, that's right. Well, hey, guy, thanks for talking okay, to us. Yeah. What was your name again? I'm George Dragon. George okay. Dragon? Yeah. Glad to meet you, George. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. My name's Raven. This okay. is Dave on the Beach from Wolf Dark Productions. Dave on the Beach. Nice to meet you. Thanks. No jumping over the side there. Right. You can just step up here and open the door, and there's yep. a little step right there. Step on that, and you're in the, in the carriage. Yeah, that's designed. It's cool, isn't it? Very functional. 1904 was about the last year for that rear entrance. Then they went to side doors. Okay. I like the rear entrance one myself. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Classy. Another Stanley steamer? A couple of them. You can appreciate the beauty of the machine work and the tooling that goes into these beautiful little cars out here. chassis and uh, but it won a race in Holland uh, he told us a little bit about it but I'm sorry I'm not. and didn't it run here on the, on the beach too I believe it did yeah. Yeah. got some sand on it hopefully it did <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh I meant back in the old days oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah no it did and, and I believe records. somebody told me that yeah it helped some yeah. records or something it's very loud we heard Yeah, I got it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
fell on the ground. Before the EPA was involved. It's a 1921 Mercedes. 21 Mercedes-Benz racer. This one has a Benz airplane engine. Huh? It's also got a big old chain on it, too. This is a Mercedes-Benz racer with a 230 horsepower engine, a six-cylinder dual overhead cam, Mercedes airplane engine, 18.8 liter, the giant Rabbit the First, built in 1921. Amazing vehicle. What do you think, Raven? I think it looks real fast even today. You wouldn't mind driving it to work, would you? No, if I had that car and I could afford it, I'd drive it once or twice to work just to show it off. <laughs> it's a cool car. Out here milling around at the birthplace of speed. I'm glad they, they have this event where they get all these cars together. I don't remember a place at one time and one place that I've ever seen this many antique, real antique cars together besides a museum. And usually at a museum, you can't get this close to the cars, you know? It's a super collection. We were told it was going to be awesome to come over here, but I didn't know it would be this good. I'm glad we made it. Thanks, Roland. Hey, you guys Here's another. Strictly racing car. That's okay. Maybe, okay. Maybe talk to us a little bit about the car. You know more about it than me. Um, the camera's on, so. Oh, okay. Well, my name's Tom Mittler. I'm from Three Rivers, Michigan. Okay, really? I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan, oh, okay. myself, original. I know where that's at. So, uh, this is the first time they've done this. And this is what the hundredth anniversary. Yep, it's the centennial hundred year anniversary of the first race in Ormond Beach. Uh, how everything got started, I guess. Now, did this car uh, run on the beach back then? 1922. 1922, and did it hold some speed records? It looks pretty fast. Yeah, it did. It went 180 mile an hour. <laughs> World War One Wisconsin aircraft engine in it. Wow. And. Uh, it's it's really uh, a lot of fun. 180 miles yeah, an hour. That's to, to pretty. To come fast. down here, they uh, they gave me a lobotomy and I can drive it. <laughs> hey, they did that to me in Michigan before I left too. <laughs> yeah, watch that, Steve. <laughs> Have you driven it three miles a minute, Tom? Oh no. Well, absolutely not. I don't no blame you. No intention. <laughs> But it still does run. And uh, did you run it on the beach yep. this morning? This morning. Okay. Are you lined up to run tomorrow? Yeah. Who are you supposed to run against? I, I, I don't think it's that structure. Not worried okay. about your competition, then we can say. No, no. I, I think <laughs> it's just going out and having fun and putting on a show. Great. It's excellent that it still runs after all these years. It's a fine piece of machinery. Well, it isn't one that you really take to the to grocery store. Right, either, right. So. More functional than, than so, uh, so it has a, a limited purpose and people don't drive it. Right. How many years did this car actually run on the beach? Uh, you know, I can't answer that. Maybe just uh, in 22 and then it became a... Uh, uh, it went to the different state fairs uh, in the Midwest. Car. An exhibition and car. An exhibition car. And this is the name of the car here, mm -hmm. the Wisconsin Special? Yeah. Sig, Sig Hogdale is the driver. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jeff. You're welcome. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Nice to talk to you. We got a 1937 Cord out here. We're going to let Harry Van Eiderstein tell you a little bit about it. He brought the car down here. Well, I live in New Smyrna Beach. A uh, Cabriolet, uh, convertible coupe, roll-up windows, carries a V8 engine, front-wheel drive, and they were very fast cars and uh, lovely to drive, nice on the highway. I see a lot of replicas of the Cord, but this one is a real Cord, is it yeah, not? It's a real one. Golly, how long have you had it? I have had it about 10 years, I guess, and uh, I traded it. I traded for it and then had to restore it. What did you trade? A Will St. Clair. Uh -huh. That was a V8 in 1926. Goodness. 
Can you do me a favor and shoot a picture of that dashboard, Dave? This thing has an awesome dashboard. Sure, we'll get that. The real cord. Owned by Mr. Eichner. And he drove the car to the show. He says he's put about 10,000 miles on this vehicle in the time he's had it, and I know those have been happy miles. Okay. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous cord. Fabulous. And there again is your owner. Yeah. What year was it? 37. 1937 yeah. cord. The 36 and 37 were virtually the same car. Okay. And had a little bit different change on the engine. What, just the engine changes? A little bit. Uh, the 36 engine had the fuel pump on top of the engine. Now is this an automatic or a standard? Gorgeous car and in mint, mint condition. about Bob Berman. Right. Look at that picture very carefully because this car is sitting in front of front of the Blitz and Bend. Yeah, well that footage is the guy that's actually on Speed Vision that's that's running that footage is actually the you know what's his name is, I've got to find who it is. I can get it to you. I because I he may have footage of this. No that we can get to that bunch. Yeah we need to no we can get to it. And see and I documented where that footage was taken. Okay actually the, the race, the, the race. The queen. It's gauges in here. What's what what her? her? What? what is that? This one right here. Man, that's a, isn't that thing cool? Look at those other ones over there. When I saw How the line goes down and it coils right there. It's a fabulous automobile. They don't make them like this in Detroit, baby. It's a Jones speedometer odometer there, made in New York, man. But we gotta get. What do you think this thing is, Dave? Is that the that's the gas, isn't it? I think it's the spark advance, Raven. I'm not positive. It could be the throttle, but I think it may be a manual spark advance. Well, I know if I look around long enough, I'll figure out where the gas is on this thing. <laughs> Let's hop in this baby and take a spin around the parking lot. Right? Well, they might not enjoy that if we did that. <laughs> they might lasso us. <laughs> this is pure race car here. Right down to the wheels. He was out there on the beach even with these little narrow tires. I'm Dave with Wolf Dog Productions, and Raven with Daytona Beach Live is looking right at you. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Hey, doing great. They want to take a special minute right now to thank all the people that are tuning in to Daytona Beach Live to check out the birthplace of the Speed Centennial event happening here in Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach. And I'll tell you what, this is a cool event, folks. We're glad you're with us today. Thanks for watching from the Raven. See you, Luke, Dave. 
figured this out. Back in the old days, the gas gauge was back here behind the car on the tank itself. Put it right on the tank. That way you know how much to put in it. Right. Bet you had to get out of your car. <laughs> car is a first prize winner in 2001 of the Antique Automobile Club Grand National winner. This beauty is a 1921 case. There it is right there if you're like me and thought all the case made was tractors. Well, have another thing. This is the owner and the man who brought it down here right here. Tell us your name, sir. Jim Schmidt, and happy to be here. Glad you're interested. Uh, this old case, uh, a lot of people don't believe that J.I. Case Threshing Machine Company made automobiles, but they were the largest maker of machinery in the world at the time with some 10,000 dealers. They only made 1,000 or 1,500 cars per year from 1912 to about 1926 when they ceased production completely. Uh, this old car was bought new in Colorado, stayed there its whole life, and it was livery for the Gilpin Hotel up in Central City, which is now a casino. Wow. And there were three of them. Two were custom bodied with these winter tops for high country cold use. One remained a touring for summer use. And they were in service until after World War II and traded in at a Ford dealer in Leadville, Colorado. Now, did you restore this car yourself? No. Uh, yeah. I fell in love with it, but it was already restored and kind of being a little neglected and decided I wanted to adopt it about eight years. And take better care of it. Right. Good. I'm glad somebody did that. I felt it, it deserved. I understand from the people who are longtime case owners that only about 70 case automobiles in any condition exist anywhere in the world today, and most of them are overseas, surprisingly. Wow, so this is an extremely rare car. In the U.S., it's rarer than it might be in Australia. Are most of the parts on this car original parts? Everything uh, is either the original part or an exact duplicate that was handmade during the restoration. Which yeah. has a Continental, a large six-cylinder Continental. Uh, virtually all of the mechanical components were purchased by Case and assembled, and they made the entire body, frame, radiator, that sort of thing. But the engine transmission, front and rear ends, steering, it's all components purchased. So they bought machine, they made machinery and bought components. Right. What year did you say it was? 1921. And you say this baby ferried people back and forth to the casinos out in Las Vegas. No, this was Central City, Colorado. Oh, Central City, Colorado. The high okay. country. Uh -huh. Then they didn't have casinos. They had other things. Pretty other much things. the same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Jack, for taking the time to talk to us. It's a fabulous, fabulous automobile. Well, thank you. I think it's an interesting, just an interesting piece of human art really needed to be preserved. Well, I'm glad somebody takes the time to put a little bit of time into these things so they don't get lost forever. Right. You know, some people neglect them, some people take care of them. You're one of the ones that take care of the things, and we want to thank you very much for this, because we wouldn't have been able to see this car at all if it wouldn't be for some people like you. Okay. Okay. Because there's nowhere for it to go. The back doesn't open. Right. All of these windows are fixed. Right. When you're in there, you're in there. So this is more of a, an oddity. Surprisingly, what survived all of the deterioration that occurred over the years on this, I've got a book, you wouldn't believe the shape it was in. It, it looks like something that you wouldn't even retrieve from a wrecking yard.
that fine wood and the fine wood on the steering wheel and here in the rear compartment is actually the original wood that was in the car in 1921. Oh my gosh, that is fabulous. It looks good. And the, the, that's on the back of the seat right there. Gives you a pretty good view. Well, thanks a lot for showing. That's us great. Car. Thanks for showing this to the people on the internet and around the world. Right. Well, We've got some more cars down here beside the sidewalk along the river. I'm gonna move on down and let you see them. This is the first year for the new body stuff. Brother, yeah. Okay. That's why I know. 49. Yeah, oh yeah, the other one was... Uh, yeah, 48 was totally different. Yeah. 49 Ford Ragtop, a clean, clean looking car. Original. Look at that, a 1930 Lincoln? Yes, a 1930 Lincoln is a New York car brought here. It's an original, unrestored car. It's got uh, 20,000 miles on it. The only thing that's been changed on it is the glass. It's an all aluminum body car. How long have you owned the car? Uh, the owner that owns it is Jim Schmidt. He's I see. Owned, he's owned it probably uh, about eight years, yeah. maybe something like that. So you're here with the car? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're racing it on the beach. I see. What are you paired off with tomorrow? Don't have any idea. They don't tell you <laughs> ahead of time. They don't tell you ahead of time. You just line up and go. Uh huh. <laughs> Where'd you bring this one in from? Uh, Gainesville, Ocala area. No kidding. You didn't drive it over, I don't suppose. You... No, sir. We trailered over. Yeah. Also, he has the case, the 1921 case, on the other side. Oh we yes, we talked to him. Right. Yes. That's the owner of the car. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful car that was yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, we talked to him. Just did a little interview with him. What a really? wonderful guy he is. Nice. Yes. Sir. Yeah, okay. National Parks Depot in Ocala and several other places. Well, when you see oh. him, you tell him that you guys ran into us also. <laughs> I'll tell him. Sure will. Oh, great. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Good afternoon, everybody. Where's your 1930 Lincoln? I'm sorry. No, that's First okay. suicide door. Right? That's that's some of the first. He's right here. As Raven pointed out, it's got the suicide doors. And this car is owned by the same man we just talked to that owns that beautiful blue case. I think he told us he had over a hundred cars. This car will be racing tomorrow. It'll be paired off with another vehicle and scrambling away from the finish line down there on the beach. The Ravens found a 39 LaSalle over here.
Look at the wings on the tail light. Reminiscent of uh, other Cadillacs there, huh? Got a little tail fin, doesn't it? Nice. Little tiny tail fin on the tail light. The Raven pointed that out. The original LaSalle wheel covers. We're looking inside a 36 Chrysler here. Separate adjustable air intakes on the front of the cowling. Nineteen thirty six Chrysler sedan, also with suicide doors. That car is owned by Wally and Angie Schneider right here in Deland, Florida, or right here in Volusia County. Deland, Florida. <laughs> this beautiful 36 Chrysler is, uh, we're sitting right here with the one of the owners. This is Angie Schneider. Right, 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 right. And you're from Deland, Angie? Yeah, we're from Deland. We drove over this morning with us. So you drove this car over? Oh, sure. We can't fly it. Well, so many... <laughs> Future or looking towards the future, this week we'll, we will be remembering and honoring those visionaries who saw a hundred years ahead of their time. We will have the 